I might as well start. I'm working on doing a couple more Occupy the Farm events with Sherry. Uh, we're looking at doing um, composting, beekeeping, spinning, uh, like wool and yarn, things like that. And then we'll, a fall program to talk about what you should be planting in the fall to be prepared for the next year because there's a lot of us that have never done this before. I'm also working uh, with Michelle on Hands Across New Hampshire, though I'm working on Hands Around the State House. Um, so I'm trying to organize enough people to get hold hands around the State House uh, to draw awareness to the Northern Pass Initiative um, because that's something that is very much an issue of the 99% and, and very much is could tell a very good story about why Occupy exists in the first place. And why we should all be working together. Yeah. Yes, unfortunately that is what it is. So. Um, and the other thing I'm working on is S17, the New Hampshire trip to uh, Wall Street for the anniversary, for the one year anniversary of the Zuccotti Park occupation. Um, there is a full day of action being planned and I, I somehow agreed to coordinate New Hampshire. Uh, so I'm working on that as well. And then as a side note, I also work with the, the Movement Resource Group, which funds direct actions. It's a website that you can go to when you submit your proposal, and then they review it, they come to a vote on it, and then they fund direct actions. So if you have any ideas for direct actions that are that require funding, um, it, is a, it is a resource for everyone to go to and submit a proposal and get some support there. Um, outside of that, I don't think I have anything else going on. Um, so, We'll just go around and if you're working on something, we'll say it and I'll write it down. I'm working on my property up in the graph. I want to make a farm up there. 24 acres, good southern exposure. Mostly undeveloped. Where is it at? In Grafton. If anybody knows about uh, uh, Ruggles Mine, very, very close to Ruggles Mine. You like that? I just moved in here, so I'm just getting a lay of the land and will support anything that will make me get something done. Where are you moving to? Uh, what town? Um, eventually Portsmouth. It's gonna oh, be a, okay. It's going to be a long way. <laughs> <laughs> we know a few people from Hawaii, by the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll stand up for a minute. Um, so I have a, a question on the direct action financing, guys. It seems like is that more for a specific action and not for ongoing it depends. Programs. There's two different funds. There's one for logistical support, which is like infrastructure, okay. um, and then there's um, direct action. So if you wanted, one of the things that we funded was um, Occupy the Storefront in Long Island, so that it, we funded them so that they could rent a space so that they have um, ongoing workspace to organize them. Um, and, and then we funded the food for NAPGAT and for NATO. So it's, it's, it depends on what's submitted, but it's not limited to just like a march. It's all about growth and movement, not anything else. So then I guess my next question is, um, I have several really cool local projects that we're working on that, as I mentioned, they, they have definable goals and, and direct action and things that are going to make a difference locally, but um, they're not things not sure that it would be appropriate to do them under the Occupy banner, but I'm sure that most of the people here would be interested in one or more of them. So I'm not sure what the, uh, what the procedure is, what the proper It would thing never is. hurt to submit a proposal. It doesn't, the proposals don't have to go through the GA consensus process, okay. so you don't have to have approval to well, submit a proposal. I also mean just as far as presenting the programs to the people here and asking them to I would if, just, you know, anything support you're working volunteer. On. Yeah, anything you're working on because, I mean, right now we still have to have a conversation about what we for, what happens due to this, so anything you're working on that people could participate in this discussion. Well, 
when um, when Ryan and I were coming back from uh, from Chicago in the car on the way, we were discussing exactly what could be done productively, and we thought um, that what was really needed was a small farmers union because it really could have a, a strong impact at the state house, especially with the industrial hemp bill. We looked more into it, and it turns out that there already is one. It's called the Grange, and that the state Grange has already signed a, um, a letter um, supporting industrial hemp at the state level. And so we've been getting more involved over there, and I can tell people a lot more about it, but I mean, that's kind of my concern. For instance, I don't think that while they're very welcoming to people, I'm not sure that you wouldn't want to put an Occupy the Grange, you know, event page because they're going to feel like, you know, whoa, you know, what are you guys doing? Yeah, it's but, it, but it is a great local program that people can show up and start participating in. And a lot of the other things that we're doing with the farms, the sustainability, the classes, um, um, with, with Bardo, with uh, the the diamond uh, D acres and um, and uh, Sherryville and, and, and exactly and, uh, and Chava Cooperative. There's so many people, and, and you know I'm just not sure what the right. There are all these little projects, and they're great, and they're all going to be amazing. But they're going to be more amazing when they're integrated, and and we, we get that flow. And I'm, but I, I don't know how to how to do that. Um, I don't know if we can do that under the Occupy banner, and I don't want to you know, be intruding on the process or pulling people away from Occupy events. So this, I don't know how that works. This is a direct response signal. It means, and it's what you use if you have a direct response to something somebody's saying. Uh -huh. um, Occupy does not have definition. Occupy doesn't have definition. We don't have. You you can't. And autonomous action dictates that whatever you decide goes under Occupy goes under Occupy. And whether you label it Occupy or not is entirely up to you. I would say that um, you probably have a lot of people here who would be willing to work with you on these projects. Um, and so definitely I would just leave the door open. Um, because it's just, there's if you've got people willing to participate, it doesn't necessarily matter, well, in my own opinion, if it's Occupy. But it, but it matters in that we're, we're discussing it as a group. It's going to go on the website. Yeah. Those people are going to see it, and it's going to. But it doesn't have to like it doesn't have to say occupy the Grange. It can say discussion about local participation in the Grange for people who are interested in forming the farmers union with, or joining the local farmers union. Right. So you can say it so that it's not like we're taking over the Grange. So I think it's good to have everything out there so that anybody can. In that case, um, I'm just going to pass this on, but I'm going to think about how, you know, the best way to present um, these projects in a, in a way that everyone's going to appreciate. Yeah. It seems to me that, that the whole Occupy thing kind of is an opposition you know, generally in oppositional to whatever, whereas there can be projects that are not oppositional at all, and, and probably, ought, you know, we're not going to occupy the Grange, we're going to join the Grange and, and, and enhance their already existing project. There are things going on in the world that are actually good, and, uh, and uh, you, know, it, it, you know, along with trying to stop the bad things, we ought to throw in some good things now and again.
working in harmony with our environment and finding solutions to our problems that don't involve government goons with guns or or necessarily uh, state or corporation approved medicine. So that's, that's one thing. Do you have a name of it? To put yes, down? it's called Saba. It's called the, the Saba Cooperative. Is Saba, S-A-B-A. It's an Abenaki word which means tomorrow. Oh, cool. Yeah. Are you associated with Sherry and Bill and these guys as well? Well, not as far as I know. Who are they? They're Abenaki Indians. They are... Uh, Bradford? Oh, Warner. 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 okay. Warner. Oh, oh. There. oh I, I wasn't aware. No, I, yeah. no. And they're very much, they're part of our Occupy the Garden uh -huh. uh, okay, event good. stuff. We actually, that they hosted it. So, oh, cool. we should probably hook you guys up. Are you on Facebook at all? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Rich Angel. Two L's. Okay. I'll hook you up, Rich. So is Saba. All right. Saba Cooperative. As far as me, I'm actually searching right now because I feel that I, 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 I was all excited for Occupy. I was like, wow, this is great. And uh, I'm still for Occupy. I have a problem with if, if Occupy is going to become exclusionatory or exclude, whatever, however I would say it. If, if Occupy is going to exclude me or anyone else, then that's not what it, was, what it said it was going to be in the first place. It's not about the 99%, which is what we're here for. So I'm currently looking to focus my energy uh, and whatever funds I can muster towards projects that are actually going to do something uh, positive toward that end. Because again, I'm here for my children and for the future. So that's, that's pretty much all I have to say about that. That's one of the reasons I've been so interested in some of the projects that are existing that are actually doing something. I'm still getting settled in, so currently I'm just learning different groups. <laughs> uh, some projects I have on my plate right now is fortunately I don't have any legal issues uh, upcoming but I do have friends who do so uh, we're going to be helping them mock trial uh, practice their trials if anyone I don't know I don't think there's any Occupy charges outstanding but if there's any legal issues with anyone within uh, Occupy it would be great if we could get together and go over the court process and what one will be looking forward to with that part of the direct action uh, committee on um, the coming uh, anniversary in OWS is planning a shutdown and I have some uh, strategies that I shared with them at the NATGAT and if you know more about it uh, we can talk about it later on. Um, I, um working on a bunch of things. One of the larger occupiers of my time is um, Habitat for Humanity in Manchester. Um, I'm a kind of a lead volunteer there. Say that again. I... One of the, the significant occupiers of my time is with Habitat for Humanity in Manchester. Um, we're building a house. Oh, okay, cool. Um, we're rebuilding a house. Yeah. Um, the question about that is uh, what with somebody that was interested in, in throwing in on that, you have to do uh, to show up or yep. Where is the house? Um, uh, Hosley Street, which is near Belmont and Grove. Is it a new house or are they renovating? It's rebuilding an old house. It's a fire, fire damage. Um, I'll also be attending the S17 event uh, down in New York City. Um, I encourage a lot of people to check that out. Um, also, I've been doing a little bit of work with uh, Move to Amend, which is an uh, organization that Ben Cohen's involved with that I suggest everybody check out if you're not familiar with. Though he's a one percenter, he is an amazing man and I, I follow his work quite well. Um, 
If anybody needs help on direct action, feel free to speak to me with the little free time I have. I like to help out. What, what's the move to amend about? Uh, it's basically uh, his one percenter view of all of this and saying Occupy's right. He's been a huge supporter of Occupy. Uh, they actually recently got a press that they're stamping one dollar bills in any bill they get with just different uh, facts about the Occupy movement and uh, really it's been a huge education process basically supportive of Occupy. Um, I'm going to be um, joining the, is that one of them? Yeah. Not to be used for bribing politicians. Oh, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> not to be used for bribing politicians. Move to amend.org. Nice. Like All it. Right. That's too right. late. <laughs> Lawrence, let's say too late. No, he talks about it, but he's not. He's got um, I'm going to um, get involved with the, uh, with the Grange. Uh, because I want to learn to, I want to learn to grow stuff better than I do, which I don't at all. So it can't be hard to get better than I am now. And um, you know, I, I like the idea of um, somebody said something about instead of being against before. You know, we we struggled as a movement in the beginning to come to a list of demands. You know, and I was like one of them saying, "We need demands. We need to say what we want." We need to tell them that they have to do this, we have to do that. We never could do it, so it didn't end up happening. But Teresa had a different take on that. And she says, instead of making demands, we should have a list of things we're going to do. And that instead of turning the power over to nameless people that we're against, saying, you have to do this for us, or we're going to sit and stew in our anxiety endlessly, that we retain the power when we say, this is what we're going to do. And I think that maybe to outsiders, that may be a more moving thing for us to do anyway. Like your average Joe potato chip watching TV who briefly sees something, you know, in his peripheral vision about people out on the street, he, he's not going to be able to muster it to get up, to go down in that gat and get hit with the batons or whatever, right? However, if, if people see, oh, there's a group of people that are going to, you know, work on sustainable agriculture in New Hampshire, a lot of people are going to be moved by that because they want to feel safe in their food supply and they want to learn how to be self-sustaining as well. So I like the idea of instead of demands, this is what we're going to do. Instead of being against, instead of actions being against something, have actions that are for something instead. And you know, this industrial hemp thing, to me, is a winner for anybody on either side of this park because it would create jobs. And it would, we could work through that avenue of that existing structure of that, that union to have, you know, to influence the legislature here to make it less restrictive in what I can grow and sell to my neighbors without needing some permit, without needing some permission, without having people come in and, and you know, ransack my place because I'm selling eggs that my neighbors want to buy or whatever, you know? So I'm definitely in on that idea. Uh, I can't contribute a whole lot, but in the past couple years, um, and, and I don't make a lot of money, so it's, it, it's a bit of a sacrifice to me. But I've started looking at buying local vegetables, um, organic eggs, mm. uh, organic meat, or you know, uh, meat that's free of hormones and, and, and all the other things that go into it. Um, just reading labels, being aware. I mean, you can't get all of it out of your diet completely. It's just that would be impossible. But I'm just trying to make more conscious choices on what I buy. And in the past couple of years, I've started uh, crocheting Afghans for friends of forgotten children in medical. And this year, I'm going to try to start doing the Afghans and then add mittens and hats for the little ones too. So it's a small thing, um, but if any of that the community to become aware of, or are you just leaving your last name? I'm Frank, so what? That can help you out. The Hell's Angels had a label. Everybody knew it was coming. It's not a bad thing 
to let people know where it's going. And as far as changing politicians' minds right now, my house is burning. I don't want to hear about somebody's bad day. And right now, in the country, there's environmental problems, economic problems. Even if they wanted to listen, you've got to ask yourself, do they have the time to listen? Do they have time to get involved in changes right now? And if you decide that they don't, you carry out a good deed mission. Because when the time comes, we'll have a better name to speak up with. In terms of direct action, I guess I would say this today is probably my largest direct action of the day is just trying to set up a venue for people to get together and start the conversation again. Um, in terms of what I'm looking to try to do is just have people are here having a discussion, trying to figure out what we want to do in the future. And then um, something that a lot of Occupy movements throughout the country have had going for them is they've had a lot of people centralized in one location, where New Hampshire is a more spread out over the area. So it's difficult to really have centralized actions. What, what I personally would like to see is just more communication, more using of the social tools that we have, media, whatever, we need to use the internet, and have actions going on on the day, but across the state of New Hampshire, not in one location, but I think if you have it going on in the northern part and the southern part and the central part, and it's all these people brought together th through a common belief, I think that can be, if not as effective, maybe possibly more effective than one central action because it's people who are just held together by strings doing something, fighting for something that they think is right. So that's what I'm looking to do, trying to help with. Uh, right now, the um, main thing that I'm focusing on is the Boston and the Fed rally. I'm trying to get as many people to come together to inform more people, essentially. And I think it's a good thing because we need solidarity. Right now, I feel like Occupy is pretty split. Like, this is not the first time I've seen this. I've seen this happen in Boston just last week. And this goes on far too much. And everybody's squabbling over small, insignificant things like guns when we should be fighting the real enemy, and that's the banksters. Yeah. Like, you gotta bring it back to banks. The banksters and the Which guns they buy to use against them. Yeah. What's the date of that again? Uh, the 22nd of September. When's the Monsanto action that we're supposed to, the girl was going to come here and talk about? Is that the 23rd? Yeah. Um, so you're doing the end of the that's awesome. Is that in conjunction with Boston? Oh, yep, that's happening in Boston. It's, well, it's a national rally. Um, we're having ours in Boston, so we're trying to get as many people together as possible. We are hoping to, um, if we can get enough people interested and start a chip in to get actual speakers, so we'll, if we have the potential of getting speakers, um, then we'll get like a permit, you know, for, we can't get City Hall, not some place with commons. Um, we would like to ideally get someone like Bernie Sanders to speak, um, but we're still, that's a work in progress right now, so. I guess I'm just more of a foot soldier, and uh, I'm the one that's, you know, staying working, so I sent my wife out to do it all. <laughs> Somebody's got to pay taxes. That's right. Thanks. Give us some cash. So those are the direct actions. What we can do is, um, when we discuss next steps, we'll figure out a way to disseminate a list of all the direct actions that are going on, and um, get it out to everyone who wants to see it. Is everybody here on Facebook and is there anybody here not? Anybody here computer illiterate? <laughs> I, I'm not on Facebook, I'm not on the internet. I I am kind of on the fence about technology. I, I'm not I, I wanna keep my footprint as far as technology very small. I don't trust it. I as far um, as the communication issues of not being on Facebook, um, while you're here get a buddy to call you when actions are going on somebody that you can rely on that's going to give you information, somebody okay. who is on Facebook. I have a question for, I don't know, before we move on, just real quick, is it, how does it work, um, 
<clears throat> I'd like to suggest, I guess, that maybe at a future GA, that um, we schedule pe people to make more in-depth presentations on these, on the move to amend, Habitat for Humanity, uh, Grange, Saba, Peaceful Streets, um, all, all of these projects that people, that someone can take time, maybe don't try and schedule them all at once, you know, just do one or two, so that those who are interested in that can come to it, they can get all the details about it, and then can decide as a group if that is something that the group can endorse, you know, not again, so that it, it works, not that it's happening under Occupy banner, but saying the, and, you know, NH Occupy supports this organization, and if you're part of NH Occupy, maybe you should think about supporting them too, but, but do more in-depth presentations on all of these groups, because I'd like to hear more about all of them. There's tons, there's tons. Um, I was looking forward to the presentation that you had talked about about the Free State Project today, and I don't know whether it's a moot point if everybody here knows about it or I doubt. I just heard you mention that you were going to make a presentation. It's, um, I can do that whenever the organized, whenever the moderators feel like. Well, the Free State Project is direct action, so why don't you want to just do that? Um, sure. It's uh, it's it's pretty intense direct action because it involves people who picked up their lives and moved across the country. So, you know, when people quit their jobs and sold their house and moved away from their friends and family that uh, they were serious about change. Uh, historically, many people have uh, migrated for more freedom uh, or just to flee tyranny. And right now, New Hampshire is one of the freer places to be in the country and that's why it's attracting people who are interested. Um, in that. I, I think, unfortunately, um, most people who throw about the FSP label don't have any conception of what that actually is or means. It does not mean libertarian, it does not mean right-wing, it, it doesn't mean anything. The only thing it means is that uh, you were unhappy with the way the country was going and you moved to a state where it seemed like your voice could be heard. Because everyone knows that whether, whether you're communist or libertarian or fringe, if you're, if you're anything outside of the two-party mainstream, you don't have a voice. You're only a few percentage points you know, of the population anywhere else in the country. When you come to New Hampshire, um, I, I think it has the largest uh, percentage of independent voters anywhere. Most people register independent not a Democrat or Republican, and, and they take uh, politics a, a little more seriously. Um, so there's, there's a lot of good reasons, but um, saying FSP does not signify anything about the political leanings of the person, because um, there is everything from Christian conservatives and Mormons to social anarchists um, under, the, under the FSP flag, which simply means that they that they moved here, and as you can, as we've experienced at the state house and in this group, people label people free staters when they're not. They've been here 20, 30 years. They've been there their whole lives, and they're just they have an, an idea in their head that anyone who's this ideology, we can just throw one more label on them. Um, in fact, there's only uh, 14 um, state reps uh, who are actually free staters. And if you read Blue Hampshire or some of these other groups, they give you, they want to give you the impression that there's like hundreds of them. That no, literally, there's hundreds of them. No, there, there really aren't. That's just a bunch of regular Joes that you're throwing a label onto, and and it, it's it's pretty difficult to communicate. Again, you know, when you're talking past people when it comes to definitions, so. Maybe if you're going to speak directly to or about the FSP, you should comprehend what that actually means and who it is that you're addressing. Because some people who are um, talking negatively about the FSP are just alienating locals. As you can see, most people here have nothing to do with that organization. I just to add to that, there is a statement of intent that goes along with the FSP, which involves you know, working towards a government that its greatest, civil government, that its greatest effect is you know, protecting life from the environment. 
So I hope that helps. Thank you. Well, those people won't carry those boxes, and that could have done well to listen to them. They don't listen. That would require skills that they don't have. Yeah. Grace, yeah. Because uh, well, we had that really discussion cool, earlier actually. about how not to react, yeah. but I would have reacted. <laughs> I do not have a presentation small, small or anything, successes. but I do have to hand out to, to everybody for audit defense. So I'd like to pass that around. And if you actually don't plan on reading it, the ink was expensive, so just keep it going. Can you repeat that? Oh, well, um, I actually have something to pass out for the audit defense for Boston, so everybody has information to take home for them. So if you guys want to just pass it around. If you don't need it, don't take it. Yeah, it costs money to print up. Yeah, my ink is way too expensive. Oh, I have my own printer. It costs thirty dollars, but the ink is like eighty. Yeah, so. it might be better off. Yeah. Well, the town I live in only has like the library, and I'm not paying attention to that. I figured it'd be the cheapest. And All right. So. Um, All right. So. Uh, um. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you have a uh, correct point. Yeah. We're going to start wrapping this. What he just said goes back to one thing I wanted to say back, but then I forgot, about de escalating. And that is anytime you're engaged in a conversation with someone, make sure you find the terms before you discuss anything. They ask you, are you a free stater? What's that? Liberal? Please define that. Nice. Et cetera, et cetera. That's an excellent point. Very good. Um, I just wanted to wrap up. Uh, I didn't really talk about what I've been working on. But what I've been primarily working on is shattering stereotypes that I've seen being thrown around. Um, the reason why we couldn't all sit here together is because of, of the negative bias towards things that we that really are important. And um, I've also been trying to rebuild downtown. Um, I'm working with a group called Visualize Nashua who try to throw events. They're trying, their, their motivation is they're trying to build condos in Nashua right on the waterfront. But what they're really doing is investing a lot in the downtown area to try to rebuild that and bring shops and bring jobs back into the downtown area instead of all the big box stores which have kind of funneled all the life out of the city. Um, so really I want people to, uh, another thing I've been working on is just reminding people that they're powerful, that they have the ability to make change and to challenge those ideas that they are helpless and need the help of the government or need, need someone to do it for them. Um, and I mean that's probably why we're all here today is because we know that we Maybe not us individually, but we have the ability to reach out to each other and, and get work done and make, thing, make real change happen and be a positive light in the world around us and a great example. Oh, yeah. And I'm doing New Hampshire Pride Festival, which is going to be LGBTS um, in, on August 11th at Veterans Memorial Park. It's going to be the first of its kind in New Hampshire. Is there a Yes, it's New Hampshire Pride Fest, uh, nhpridefest.com. Um, we're going to have, uh, fam it's going to be a family friendly event, so you can bring the kids. It's not going to be like a bunch of drag queens wearing nothing. Um, there will be a family friendly drag show. There'll be a Pride March, which we're repeating from uh, the one we did in January, where we had 300 people march with us. And there will also be a puppy drag parade. <laughs> so, um, if you want to see the most adorable thing on earth, go there. It's uh, August 11th, and uh, the website is nhpridefest.com. And I have flyers with me. Did you just post that link on one of the pages? Yep. Yep. Yeah. And also, if you're interested, there is vendor space available there. If you are somebody that has things that you like to sell, there's vendor spaces for 40 bucks for that. Day. Uh, 50, 50 dollars. But if you're a small independent business, we have a sliding fee. Alright, do we want to move on to the next topic? Yeah, next on the
the agenda, and maybe we ought to just combine this into the, the last part of it. Um, do you want to do that? Yeah, we can, we can skip the qualification. Okay. Right, so, we'll do it afterwards. we're going to really quickly um, go over National Gathering, which was the event that happened last week in Philadelphia. It was the first National Occupy event. Um, well, yeah. Um, and it was in Philadelphia. Um, Cecilia was there. Garrett, were you there? Was anybody else here from there? There's another one I met from Keene. Yeah. He took my uh, uh, number, but I haven't heard from him yet. We can't hear you. There's another person from Keene. Yep. But I, I haven't heard from him. So at National Gathering, what happened was a bunch of people converged in Philadelphia to start to come up with a visioning process and a vision statement for the Occupy National Movement. And out of that came a list of like a hundred things that, based on popularity the, for the vision statement. And uh, I can post that online or with this or something. Um, I don't know what you wanted to talk about with regard to the National Gathering. I wasn't there, um, so I don't have anything. I don't really know. Well, the National Gathering uh, was fragmented. There was two... Uh, two there, it, it was fragmented, and I didn't know before I went there that it was... Uh, there was two... Uh, one, uh, this is the elitist group, and the other one was like a combination of people of color, the anarchists, the radicals, the outcasts, the hippies, on, on one side and the other side are, are, are the more of the upper middle class. And the, the um, purpose of the national gathering was to uh, forge a vision of, of the Occupy. And when I went there, I thought there will be a discussion of whether or not it's time uh, to formulate a vision or some kind of uh, in a national level. But when we get there, when I get there, it was already it was already decided, and whoever decided it that it's in Philly, which is uh, uh, occupied Philly, is fragmented. It, it there wasn't no consensus. Uh, it was blur, blurry. That people that came from other occupy. If you look at the uh, uh, program of invitation, it's only like half of the occupy in the co uh, in the com in the country that signed the solidarity uh, to the NATGAD. So I think uh, I know this occupy Boston, occupy Chicago. Occupy Oakland and Occupy LA. I met uh, actually uh, uh, people from Occupy LA that they haven't uh, have a clue uh, whether a vision was uh, put out or, or, or they're gonna talk about the vision. That uh, what are the pros and cons of the vision if it is uh, uh, formulated, and a lot of us. That during that uh, uh, visioning process, who was waiting for the, for that to happen, we didn't. Uh, we end up abstaining because we didn't know uh, what will be the outcome, what will be the uh, pros and cons of that, and why is it so hush hush? And uh, it end up that like over hundred people are are against the, the visioning process and I was my and myself was questioning the validity of it because did it go through a consensus process? I, I thought that was the gathering is about and it showed up all the uh, fragmentation and, and uh, um, it, it, it wasn't but there are things that are uh, uh, accomplished like the facilitation teachings and uh, there are some good things that but with regards to the visioning at all a lot of people feel that the vision the vision should be uh, hold off because of like one uh, uh, from LA said 
which I also uh, shared with, that it could be, uh, if we put out our vision out there right now, and the election is coming up, we're opening ourselves to vulnerabilities that our vision will be used against us again, and we're going to be deceived by the politicians. So there was uh, one argument that was uh, holding it off, and well, it, it didn't, the other group, uh, Occupy Philly group, kind of like uh, hijacked the process of the visioning, and instead of, it didn't finish the whole process. It just gets to the like three, it, it gets only to the first uh, two steps and it was hijacked. And the other uh, uh, Occupy Philly uh, occupied the, uh, the entire uh, the entire part where it was held on. And I think what they bring to the OWS with the Guitar Army group is the init initial, but it wasn't the whole because I I, I know it didn't finish. That was the, the uh, biggest, uh, um, it, it wasn't solidarity, no. So, the National Gathering <coughs> was uh, the first one, and I was actually involved in the planning of it up until I started with the Movement Resource Group, because at that point I had to give something up, I gave up the National Gathering. And it was really individuals who went in every week and did these conference calls and did this planning and things like that. But it was really um, people just trying to put something together. And um, I think that any, I think anybody who tried to do that for the first time was going to have a similar experience. And we have to learn from it and move forward and find a way to kind of address that going forward. But I don't think that the intention was to hijack. I think the intention was to try and find a way to get a national, leaderless, horizontal movement to come up with a vision statement, and that's what they came up with. Whether it did or didn't, it, it doesn't seem like it did, but I don't think it was an intentional hijacking. Um, that would be the Do you want to go around and have a horizontal stack like that? Is that something you want to talk about? Take the check to see if you want to have... I have a question slash comment. So, the, at National Gathering, was there a particular purpose? Like, were they looking to create like a statement from the National Gathering? Yep. Okay, and they the didn't really completely get a vision. They got a list of things. So we have we have no action. about groups in general. Um, I've been reading a book about the psychology of groups and I can tell you that small, medium, and large groups are fundamentally different in how they, how they respond and the methods that you need to deal with them. And I think part of the issue with Occupy so far is that they've been trying to come up with one method large, medium, and small groups efficiently, and that does not exist. There's a different methodology for organizing and building uh, consensus and getting things accomplished and motivating large groups, and a different process for medium groups and a different process for small groups, and one process is not going to be efficient 
um, across across those lines. And so, for what it's worth, I don't want to spend a lot of time expounding on it because that is its whole own class. But I'm throwing that out there. Direct direct response to that, if no one mind. If anyone's familiar with physics or M theory or has any idea what what it basically means, M theory just says that the, you cannot define every system under the same terms. Every system is fundamentally different, whether it's on an extremely large scale or an atomic scale. There's just different fundamental guiding rules to how it's going to go, how it's going to develop, and what you need to do about it. So even just on a physical level, it's true. There's just always going to be some differences. Was there an official statement or anything that came out of the meeting? Yeah, it doesn't look like that got finished. Um, I'd like to actually put a proposal for the national gathering is that we look, we take a look at their mistakes. Alva, would you be able, willing to uh, teach some of us what went down and we could look at the mistakes that were made and possibly try to improve upon that? Of course, absolutely. The, uh, the process was in there and the uh, in, uh, program of invitation, but it didn't get finished uh, on the actual uh, process. Okay. That'll be posted too. Um, I think that is one of those things where we're going to have to have a bigger discussion that's specifically focused on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and whether or not that's a conference call or another meeting, we can figure that out afterwards. Okay, so that's National Gathering. So at this point, um, does anybody have anything else they want to add about National Gathering before we go on? All right. I just need to um, So a list came out? Yeah, I'll post it. The top of a it. A list of what? Things, issues that people want to address. Concerns. Common ground? The most commonly um, mentioned issues. But with, with so many people as think abstaining and, and the, I'm, yeah, there's a list. I'll post it. So the people that are motivated enough in this movement to go all the way to a national gathering couldn't do what people are pissed off that we couldn't do here. Yeah, is that we it? Need to fit, and that's sort of we need to figure out how to do it here, and then other places will figure out how to do it there. And then once we figure that out, I mean, theoretically, my suggestion was um, when I was participating to have all of the GAs come up with their own vision statements beforehand so that they had been through the process. Um, and it was suggested, but it didn't happen. So I think that we kind of have to locally figure out how consensus works for us, what our vision is, and how we move forward. And then as we do that, we can share that with other people, and they can, and, and it'll evolve. But this was a forced situation. That's a good transition. Yeah. It is. Um, I would like to propose, as far as moving forward, um, that this group rename itself. That this this group rename itself, keeping the occupied title, but with a, a different group. Because I would like us to put out a vision statement that is probably separate from that vision statement there. Because I I don't want any of us to claim that we speak for them. And, Clearly, they have moved on. What about the other way around? I mean, yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. They sort of don't get a claim yes. on the name either, do they? Yeah. Right? Well, that's why we're going to name ourselves something different. I think we're obviously going to need a stack on this one. Yeah. Okay. I think we should just. I was going to. Are we on moving forward now? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. We're on moving forward. So why don't we just. Uh, National Gathering? Did you yeah, have something, something else you wanted to. Yeah, he, yep. he, he, a national gathering, we're talking about a lot of people. Yep. Isn't a ga gathering going to be defined by the area that you're going to occupy? <laughs> well, they chose Philadelphia because it was on Independence Day. If you've got a lot of people, why bring them all in at once? Why not have ships? One ship, cold red, cold... Now, if you take the military, you've got battalions, mm -hmm. tools, companies, squads. You don't seem to have any organization like that. No. Uh, and you should, because this is my The, the National Gathering was really like one, it was an attempt, I think, to have one large well, gathering the thing I on the to get people together. Is that people get dirty and they would get tired? I mean, if I went to the National Gathering, I might show up for a week or two, but then I want somebody to take my place. The people well, the, upstairs ain't got it. The National Gathering was one week. One what? One week. 
This is a, a one week? day. Yeah, it was right. a caravan and then one, one day. This is a discussion we should have, have a during time. the National Gathering yeah. Teach-In. We're going to have a Sunday. National Gathering oh, Teach-In. Yeah. This is, yeah. And we'll, um, we'll post the minutes if we can. Hey. Definitely. So then why don't we go around, why don't we go this way this time? Um, changing it up. Changing it up. Changing it up. Changing um, About what your thoughts are in terms of moving forward. Um, and we'll just leave it open-ended. If that's okay. Is that okay with everybody? Alright. Um, well, I think that Brian should tell us what he has in mind first. So, like, because I don't know what you mean by pick another name. Okay, so... So if we if we represent ourselves as Occupy New Hampshire and they represent themselves as Occupy New Hampshire, we have to then go to them and get consensus for what we want to put out as a group. If we have a different, if we operate under a different entity, we can put out our own consensus statement and our and our own uh, vision statement without having to seek out their approval, which. They won't probably will not give us a If they chose to split yeah. Yeah. Hold on, yeah. Yeah. Sure. do we need to get their consent? Okay, you're gonna need to actually uh, moderate here. Stack yeah, because yeah, Mark was they first split. and then okay. we'll, we'll the process, stack. Guys, oh, 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 this is gonna be the most probably well, thank you. difficult part of this conversation. I think the best thing to do is not get into the whole back and forth, but just go around first and see where everybody's at and then we can talk about what the name change and all of that is because I think that people probably have different thoughts about whether we should leave Occupy behind or be part of Occupy or whether they should leave Occupy. Let's ha let everybody have a chance to talk and then come Yeah, let's uh, go because the sun is toasting us. <laughs> is that sound? Do we need to change location or is it still okay? I'm just more compact. Just, yeah, compact. Okay. okay. Hey, that's good. Everybody get close.